Welcome back people, and a little bit of a different type of video tonight, but still 100% on chest, 100% on bench, but a little bit of a history lesson for you guys. Don't turn off, don't worry. But here we go. So, the bench press. Now as we know, if we look over there, you'll see my setup over there. Just quickly, usually there's a bench there, which is literally down near my feet, and there's a reason for that. But if we take it right back to the early 1900, so around 1930, 1940, that's when the bench press got its popularity. And believe it or not, before that, it was a floor press. So it originated from floor press, then went to bench press. The reason being, when it all kicked off, it was about this immense show of strength. What lifters would do is they would get a barbell, load it with weight, lie on the floor, roll the barbell over them, and then press it above themselves to a full lockout. And if you see some of those videos, and I'll try to put a few clips into this video, it was absolutely insane. Now, like everything, and we know these days, everyone finds a cheat, powerlifting arch and everything else. So even though it originated as a floor press, it then started to be turned into a bench press. So people would use benches, people would use boxes, that type of thing. And then it formed into what we now know as the bench press. Now, the reason why it came off the floor into the bench press was because people started to cheat. People started to use what was called the belly lift. So those people with the power bellies or whatever else used to literally use their belly to get it to a position where almost half the rep was done. So they used to roll it, boom, onto the power belly and help that in the push. We all love a cheat. Crazy, isn't it? So it literally came away from floor press completely in like 1930, 1940, and by 1950, it was all about the bench press. Now, most of you will probably know Joe Wider, Wader, depending on if you're in the UK or America or anywhere else, it's pronounced in different ways, but I'm pretty sure, and I pronounce it Joe Wader. Now, he was a massive, massive person, mogul, in the bodybuilding and weightlifting community around those 1950s, 1960s, and he blew up the bench press by going out to press, going out by media and calling it the best lift of all time. And as we know it now, it's moved on quite a lot. So from the floor press, believe it or not, they were pressing close to about 140 kilos. Yeah, which is insane. So they're literally got 140 kilos dead on the floor, rolling it onto their power bellies, or if they're not cheating, literally into a press position, which is insane. Absolutely insane. Sorry, got something in my eye. <laughs> So when it went onto the bench press though, as we know it now, we've got Julius Maddox, which I think his record is still on or around about 355 kilos, which he did back in 2021. I don't think he's beaten that, but he well, may well have. 355 kilos, absolutely incredible. And then you've got that guy, what's his name? Oh Jesus, it's Kolb, K-O-L-B. I remember the spelling of his surname. I can't remember his first name, Jimmy or someone like that. He is a fully equipped bench press world record. And that's around 630, 635 kilos, which again is ridiculous, but that's fully equipped. But Julius Maddox, as all of you all know, who follow kind of powerlifting, kind of like weightlifting, his is 355 or probably over that now. And that's completely raw, which again is absolutely insane. So what are we going to be doing this evening? And why am I talking about where bench press originated from? Because we're going to go back old school. Before you say it, no, I wasn't around in the 1940s and I never did this before, cheeky buggers. But what we've done this today is, now I tried this earlier and there is no way in the world I'm rolling that over my stomach and then pressing it. We might try it again later. However, I am going to take it back to the floor press. So all I've done is I've grabbed a pair of uh, three ton, because that's how much I lift three ton car jacks and just raise it slightly off the floor. Just allow me to get weight plates on either side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press it and see how heavy we can go. Now, as you know, my kind of single rep is around 150 on the bench. As well as that, I can kind of get a decent four or five repetitions out of 130. But what are we gonna do from here? Now, knowing a floor press and having done floor press many, many times with dumbbells, but never barbell, it's a whole different animal because of course it's coming above your chest a hell of a lot is put into your triceps so this is an immense tricep exercise but there's also a lot on the anterior delts as well 
So, without further ado, let's stop chatting and let's go old school, back to the 1940s, 1950s. Let's see what we can do. I'll catch you back in a sec. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit dubious of this. <laughs> I've put 60 kg on there, as you can see. So let's get under, underneath the bar and let's see what happens, shall we? I'm more scared to get underneath the bar and this collapse on top of me. How they ever rolled this and lifted it, 140 kilograms, is absolutely, yeah, blows my mind. But we're gonna do it with 60 kg and see how we get on to begin with. Oh. 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 Tell you one thing, it stops you flaring your elbows and for some reason, I go straight to suicide grip on this as well. Oh, there we go. Bloody hell. You certainly feel this in the triceps and you feel it like you wouldn't believe in the anterior delts. Jesus, interesting. Whew. So as I said, where I really felt that, and you could probably see, it really corrects your form. Managed to kind of wear, sometimes you get flare, you're able to tuck your elbows in. Just without even thinking, I went suicide grip for some reason, but then changed that around. And actually that took a little bit of the pressure off my anterior delts. But that one, compared to a bench, that's only 60 kg. That's literally, I do that, not even a working set, that's a warm up. Jeez, you can see how that really hits the anterior delts and really hits the triceps. So let's go up, let's make it a little bit more interesting. This might be a little bit of a silly jump and having never done this before. But let's go from 60, put on 80 and see how that one feels. See you back in a sec. So we're back on it and we now have 80 kg on the bar. As I said, I'm a little bit apprehensive of this, but hey, you live and learn. Let's give it a go. Now, last time, we kind of went in a bit of a strange way. So I'm going to get right underneath it here. Bloody hell. Whoop. It's all about getting the position here. How they ever did 140. I'm probably going to say that about a million times on this video. It's absolutely <laughs> beyond me. Right, here we go. It doesn't feel like you're coming down low enough to call it a bench press. And probably they were tucking their elbows right underneath. To be honest with you, that was all right. So let's go up to 100 kg. Right, don't worry, it's still me. I've just put the hood up because it's now hit freezing again in the garage, that cold. Here we go. Now this is probably gonna be the clincher for me, I think. <laughs> 100 kg now on the bar. So you've got 220s either side. So we're gonna try a floor press barbell with 100 kgs, see how we get on. As I said before, I do not know how they possibly built up. And I've seen videos on it, it's mental. Literally, barbell, roll it from their head, across their body, as soon as you got close to chest, push up. 140 kilos they were doing back in the 1940s and 1950s before Tren. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Right, 100 kilos. Let's give it a go, shall we? kind of expecting to be able to do one, but also expecting this to fall on my neck. <laughs> Hence, we've got the safety bars. You guys always say, Barry, you need safety bars. Hey, I've got it on the floor press. I just haven't got them on my bench. Right, let's give this a go. Bloody hell. 
Jesus Christ, 100 kilos. Oh my God, how the bloody hell. Bloody hell. Right, I don't know about you. I counted 10 on that, which was happy days. And actually, that felt all right. I do have to move the stands around a little bit because that one was perfect. That over there was almost hitting the side of the stand each time. That's just absolutely mental. All I can say is, don't feel too much in the chest at all because we're only coming down halfway. And as we know, really midpoint to top, there's a lot more delts and a lot more triceps. But bloody hell, that is one immense. If you're looking to strengthen your bench from mid to top, let's be honest, from here to here, all chest. From here to here, that's where you bring in your anterior delts. Also, say for example, those supporting muscles like your serratus anterior and things like that. Yeah, the stabilizers. But yeah, that's insane. We're gonna go up, because I flipping enjoyed that. But yeah, that's just mad. As you can see, I, I don't know what it is. I literally go on to suicide grip instead of the usual wrap on that. It's weird, because my hands are on the ground, sorry, my arms are on the ground, and that means the whole of my tricep is literally on the floor you're having to go from a static lift position which is just insane i freaking love it right let's put another five kilograms on each side and we'll go up to 110 shall we that's bonkers you can kind of see though why it was such a popular lift of course before they brought in benches and everything else when people started to cheat. But bloody hell, they wouldn't even have had things like this to keep it above the ground. Yes, their plates were bigger, I saw that in the pictures. They were almost like the size of bumper plates. But some of these guys had like double the chest size of me. So how they ever rolled it up and then pressed it, so rolled it up the body and then pressed it, like 140 kilos, it is insane. That's like three, 300 pounds or so, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Right, let's get it done. 110 kilos, people. Taking it back to the old school, taking it back into the mid 1950s, 19, well, 1940s, 1950s. So this is 110 kilos, floor press, everything on our anterior delts and everything on our triceps. God, what a fun lift, but what an insane isolation lift for your delts and your triceps. It's absolutely insane. Right, let's go. Oh my God. Wow, well, 
wow. That absolutely blows up your front delts. Jesus, just feels, feels alien. So of course on a bench press, straight down, boom, straight back up. This, of course you're only going to hit, so it's probably gonna favor those people with longer arms, but I haven't got long, that long arms. But you're bringing it back to a static position with the whole of the back of your tricep is literally resting on the floor. As you saw, on each rep, it was a split second at the bottom, then push back up. But yeah, that's insane, man. Jesus, bringing it back to the old school. That was good, love that. Right, I think I've shown you enough of that. So what I'm off to do, we're back. How enjoyable was that? Literally turning back time to the 1940s, 1950s. That was mental. They were strong back there, man. I did what, 110 kilos, and that wasn't even rolling it up. As I said, I'll put some pictures in the video as well. So let's quickly compare it. I've still got 100 kilos on the bar, so I literally just took 10 kilos off, or five each side, put this back on the rack. So let's compare the floor press to the bench press. So of course, with the bench press, I can come right down to my chest. So there's a lot more chest activation. I feel it a lot less in my anterior delts. And this is all round a bigger chest exercise. Which one feels safer? This one by a country mile. <laughs> so there we have it. Floor press, 1940s. Bench press, 2024. Thank you for watching. Going a little bit back in history. As I said already, hopefully I've already put some pictures in there on the thumbnail and throughout this video just to keep us on the way into history. But other than that, I enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one, peeps. Thanks very much, as always, humbled. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, and as always, comment. See you on the next one.